I think uh, everyone knows in our team. Uh, basically, against Giants, it's all about uh, not letting Pepe 1v9. Mostly, uh, the meta on mid lane is like safe farm. You trade only when you're sure that you're gonna win the trade and things like this. But Pepe plays super aggressive. And yeah, if you're not used to that, you, you might get killed. So. Welcome back to the European LCS, where Challenger Series champions Origen are about to take the stage against Giant Gaming. And, well, it's quite unusual that the team that has been in the LCS is not the favorite versus the new coming team incoming from Challenger. Two very different expectations coming in for this squad. Let's uh, start by taking a look at the lineup for Giants. They avoided relegation. They beat Reason Gaming 3-1 in the promotion tournament. It is, of course, Werlip, Frederick, Pepinero, Adri, and their new support, Godfred, and their coach, Lozark. So we heard um, Soaz in the lineup already, uh, in the video rather, already talking about, you know, not underestimate them, don't let Pepe 1v9, yeah. that has been the story. But it's got to come down to this as well. Their new support, they have made a change. Have made a change. Rydal last split didn't have the best showing, honestly. There were clearly some problems on the team in terms of also like the coordination. When do we engage, when don't we engage with Godfred? I read uh, an interview. With him, he was talking about how he is a playmaker. He's an aggressive support. He wants to be the guy starting the fights. With Morgana is, and Thresh. With Morgana and Thresh, okay, that's a little bit different, <laughs> but that's good skill shots. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a, it's the same as Rydal, though. So I don't expect to see a, a different play style from Giants, but I do have to say, yes, it's about you know, can Paper Nero one v nine. For me, it's about what can the other four members do now. This, but they're the ones who have to step up and get on the level of Pepe Nero. So it's not a, just about shutting down this mid laner against Giants. Yeah, and it, it's kind of just an adaption of what we were saying all the way through last split was, can Giants adapt? We found out, yes, yes, they can. In the in the very end of the season, in the Challenger series, we saw Whirlib start picking up the Hecarim, start picking up a couple more champions. So we know the potential is there. And the one thing that is certain is Giants, after they're showing on Reason Gaming, certainly deserve their spot in the LCS. The problem yeah. for them is, if they don't really improve very quickly, they're going to be fighting for relegation again. Yeah, but they've had a better setup for this split. When they joined last split, it was like, we have to find a gaming house, we have to start getting used to the LCS level, the scrimming and everything. Now they've had three, four months of practice, they have everything sorted. This is the split for them to show how good they can be. Problem is the competition has gone up, up and up yeah. as well from every other single team. Yeah, uh, one last factor which is also uh, is going to influence their performance on the Rift directly is communication, obviously, playing with that same squad in the Spanish language for another Dire Split and now the English, how will that come in? Well, or Swedish, who knows? <laughs> So I've heard Swedish. It is not a very pretty language. Oh. Danish, wow. but that's, However. Like, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful. But uh, when it comes to communication, same interview, funny enough, he was saying it's not really going to be a problem because everyone on Giants can speak English, at least when it comes to communicating in-game. I mean, you don't really need a massive vocabulary when it comes to explaining, let's go Dragon, let's not go Dragon. Yeah, all right. Well, let's just listen to the Fnatic comms at times where Huni knows exactly what to do <laughs> at every time. Well, uh, Giants here, their competitor fresh out of the Challenger series on the Red side is, of course, Orihan with Soaz, Amazing, Expeke, Niels, Mithi, and their coach, Leduc. And uh, we were talking to Soaz and Expeke before here, and they set expectations. Getting to Worlds, yeah, no, maybe getting to playoffs is definitely a goal, but we can't be uh, or think that we're going to go too high immediately knowing the amount of talent that's on the Rift, and it is their first split together as well. It is, it, but it's weird. They're one of the rosters that's been together for the longest amount of time at the same time. We looked yeah. at every roster coming in here. Uh, so many of the lineups made ch changes, single changes, mostly from the AD carries where we had that shuffle. Arjun have been playing together since just about the beginning of 2015. So they've had a lot of time to be practicing. I know even though they were in Challenger, they were scrimming LCS teams. Yeah. So expect them to be very well practiced coming into this. That really is the difference uh, between Origin and standard Challenger teams qualifying is the normal Challenger team is playing just to get into the LCS and that's like the first goal. We saw Giants say, we just want to stay in the LCS, it's all we want to do. Origin were playing as they were almost already in the LCS and they were practicing to become a top team. So we're going to have to see now on stage. I talked to Pekka just before when Krepo was helping me tie my tie here. So 
he was basically saying it's super weird being back in the studio, and even though they're only gone for once, but it almost feels like he's a he's a rookie again. It's mm -hmm. new for him, so maybe there's some nerves on, on stage. We're gonna have to see for the first game. I feel like that could be something that could really help them out as well. But of course, it's something we talked about a lot when you had the old Fnatic roster. How motivated are these players still? Uh, I'm quite sure they will be newly motivated coming in here. As well with Niels, who is the only rookie, and you've watched him a lot in the Challenger series. He really is the guy to watch. He is. He's been a massive part of the Origin lineup as a whole, which is very weird considering it's a, a team with former world champions. Uh, you look at the amount of just damage and control over the game he has for Origin. Uh, he actually deals 31.5% of his team's damage in total, which for an AD carry, especially in Challenger, is, is borderline unheard of. And it's impressive that he gets so much freedom during team fights in Challenger. That's his main strength, team yeah. fight positioning. Will he be able to transition that to LCS? A lot of people have called him Reckless version two, basically. A newer, newer and younger and I guess taller <laughs> version of, of Reckless. So it's somewhat the same style. Again, it's very focused on positioning in these teamfights here. You don't have to be the guy jumping in first. You don't have to kill the other people in lane. Mithy, as well as the support, has adapted a little bit, and he's no longer just purely about dominating laning phase. It's about playing the rest of the map. So I'm not expecting them to dominate 2v2, but team fighting wise both Mithy and Nils should be very, very strong. Yeah, and the factor then here is, of course, the offline experience. I don't feel that it will be a problem for most of the members, but maybe for Nils it could be something that makes or break their very first game. And then, of course, the transition from going in Challenger and, and having people on the desk here even amazing who I'm watching games with and he's saying, okay, this is what this team should do right now. This is how this team should move right now. But the transition to doing it here will be a wake-up call. Hey, that's for sure. I mean, it's a lot easier sitting up here and looking at the game <laughs> when you can see both sides and making the calls. So it's definitely uh, different for them. Again, they've been playing from the gaming house when they played the Challenger Series most of the time, had the final here in the studios. So yeah, there's a few things they have to get used to, but I mean, come on, they've been playing for so long, these players. There's nothing new in game. It's not like suddenly the dragon is in a different position <laughs> than normally. So I'm sure they're going to be fine. Yeah, it didn't move. Uh, there is a matchup that we particularly want to keep an eye on in our featured matchup here for this game. We will be focusing in on the mid in the clash between Pepinero and Xpeke, and it also represents a stylistic shift in the European LCS. They're both known historically as hard carry mid laners. Xpeke in the summer split of 2014 did 35% of his team's damage, and in the spring split of 2015, Pepinero 31% of the team's damage. But uh, it seems that the game has shifted away from just having those mid laners carry the whole thing. Your team has to have multiple threats. Yeah, Multiple Threads is the name of the game right now, and Origin is certainly a team that could look to set that up, but it was very interesting. We worked with our stats guy, Spelzy, uh, and just our team as, as a whole, looking at how the Europe meta is right now. And we looked at last split. The teams that had the highest damage dealing mid laners, Elements, Copenhagen Wolves, Giants, and MYM. Those are all bottom half of the table teams, uh, and they rank just poorly overall. You change that or you contrast that with the top side and it's very similar to what XPK is doing. XPK changed his style up for Challenger Series as well. He was only dealing about 28% of Origins damage uh, in the Challenger Series. He probably could have carried that, but it certainly is a lot more in line with what we're seeing out of the likes of Fnatic, out of yeah. the likes of SK. It's just the way the current meta is, and because the game keeps evolving here, if you have a mid laner who needs to be the carry, it also locks you on very specific champions you can play, and that becomes very predictable in the way you play. So definitely for, for Giants, we, we keep saying it, it's about what can the other four guys do around Pepinero. Can they step up, become LCS level every single game they play, and then suddenly the lineup can look very solid? But as long as there's only Pepe Nero running the show, it's tough for Giants to win games. Yeah, absolutely. But knowing uh, the fact that we saw them Doing different things at the end and re-qualifying should be good for them as well. Someone we haven't uh, touched on particularly is Amazing. I just mentioned him once. And when we talk about multiple threat team, Amazing is definitely someone who's stepped up in the Challenger series to kind of carry games on his own. Certainly. He was always seemed to always be in the right place at the right time, bar one or two games mm -hmm. perhaps where Origin did struggle. That's one thing to note. Everybody with big expectations, Origin still struggled in a, a game here or there. So they're certainly nowhere near a guaranteed top half of the tables finish. But that was just a team which is honestly impossible to predict. Like, how do we rank a team that's been winning almost every single game in the Challenger Series? We don't know what the scrim results have been, and they tend to not even matter when it comes to playing on stage. And we haven't seen them in some time, and that's what, like, against LCS competition, obviously. So I'm really looking forward to see what they can bring. I see them maybe before the split even starts as maybe like middle team, mm -hmm. a middle tier team. 
but they can definitely surprise and, and go further up. Yeah, that's what they've said here themselves as well. Soaz was also quite careful with where they could go. Uh, Soaz actually, the return of Soaz, who was for the longest time one of the best top laners we've had here in EU, and now he has some time to regroup, uh, regroup up against Whirlip in this one. Someone who has been uh, affected by nerves before it has been so so he might really have something to prove in this one yeah and also because we have so many new top laners since he was in the lcs back in the day it was freddy and wicked and then so as you know fighting darian of course mm -hmm. who can forget him now we got all these new faces in huni kabuja chachi so on which honestly look better than what we used to have in this top lane. so it's going to be cool to see if source has been able to follow the talent we've gotten here and if he can match them i, I mean he's been here so many times versus Whirlip. As long as you don't give him Jax or Hecarim. Oh, wait, you can give him Jax. Don't give him Hecarim. That's, I'm going to say like give that. Him Jax, you give him Jax? Give him Jax. Give him Jax. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to say you can give him Jax. You can play around it. You can play around it. All right. Stress, what do you think? Because obviously Whirlup was someone who we were looking at very heavily in the previous split, and then we discovered, well, maybe a one-trick pony. Now the Hecarim is in there. In promotion, he played Shivana and Scion, mm. not knowing if he will go to that immediately in this one. What do you think? I guess the question for me is not only has Whirlib changed, but has Soaz changed? Because he's a player that is very AP champion focused, a lot of utility. Every now and again, he'll make something in, was a big proponent of Lissandra last year. Has he added anything else to that playbook since the Challenger Finals? Because we're seeing more and more, as Deficio talked about, the level of EU top laners has gone up. Soaz still has the potential. Has he actually put it in his playbook to see whether he can bring it out? Yeah, and if we bring it down to the way teams um, play on a more macro level, you kind of have the instinct to say, well, Giant should have learned a, a thing or two after playing for a split. Origin has played in the Challenger Series, and they've had that knowledge prior to the Challenger Series and LCS, but I feel like that is something they might need to find their footing on again. Yeah, I definitely think we can see if Origin falls behind, that's where it become a problem for them because they're not used to doing that in the challenger scene. They're not used to get 5, 6k gold behind coming into the mid game and have to like claw their way back. So we're going to have to see if that's going to be a problem for them. When it comes to closing out games, that's where Origin has a lot of practice, where Giants struggle. Like that was a problem last split. They had a, a fairly good or a fairly aggressive early game. They got a lot of kills and whenever they got a goal lead, they just didn't know what to use, uh, how to use the goal basically. They, they were stuck either just kept running into team fights or kept waiting for Pepinero to, to kill someone. And that was a problem because it was too easy for other teams to like stall out the game and then come back. We did, however, see Giants uh, starting to adapt again, regardless of, of the, the top lane picks. If you remember last week of the regular season, we saw the game against Elements where Pepinero was on his Twisted Fate yeah. that he's just played. And halfway through the game went, great, I'm going to split push. Started taking towers, <laughs> put Elements on the back foot. So we certainly know that Giants, given the inch, can, uh, can look to compete yeah. in the game. But sure. one thing that is going to really help the style of Origin, the games they won in Challenger and other tournaments outside of the EUCS. They were playing very aggressive style, putting a lot of pressure on the map early, getting amazing into lanes, getting early kills. The style that didn't favor them was the scaling composition, which has started to fall out of the meta when you look at the likes of a Juggermore composition. Sure. We just don't see it anymore. Those were the comps they started to lose on. Yeah, well, a lot to theorize when it comes to these two teams. I think we got to see them on the rift, and things are ready to go on stage, so let's check in at the caster desk for picks and bans. Thank you very much, guys. We are about to jump into game number two here on the Summer Split. Sorry about the small delay. We got some new players First time on, stage. on stage, getting set up, old dog, new tricks and all that as Origin are returning. But I want to go back to something that Soaz and Peke had said at the beginning of the day, and uh, uh, Shox had alluded to it in the, the pregame. They didn't sound confident. They didn't sound scared. But there was a little bit of hesitation in saying, look, we need, to, we need to see, we need to get on stage under the lights and see if we can show up. See, the thing is, if you walk in here and you're like, we're going to win it all, and you don't, then people will come.